Introduction of the Kabbalion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrea Fiore. The Kabbalion by the Three Initiates. The lips of wisdom are closed, except to the ears of understanding. To Hermes Trismegistus, known by the ancient Egyptians as the Great Great and Master of Masters, this little volume of Hermetic teaching is reverently dedicated. We take great pleasure in presenting to the attention of students and investigators of the secret doctrines this little work based upon the world old Hermetic teachings. There has been so little written upon this subject, notwithstanding the countless references to the teachings in the many works upon occultism that the many searchers after the arcane truths will doubtlessly welcome the appearance of this present volume the purpose of this work is not the enunciation of any special philosophy or doctrine but rather it is to give the students a statement of the truth that will serve to reconcile the many bits of occult knowledge that have been acquired but which are apparently opposed to each other and which often serve to discourage and disgust the beginner in the study our intent is not to erect a new temple of knowledge but rather to place in the hands of the student a master key with which he may open the many doors in the temple of mystery through the main portals he has already entered there is no portion of the occult teachings possessed by the world which have been so closely guarded as the fragments of the hermetic teachings which have come down to us over the tens of centuries which have elapsed since the lifetime of its great founder hermes trismegistus the scribe of the gods who dwelt in old egypt in the days when the present race of men was in its infancy contemporary with abraham and if the legends be true an instructor of that venerable sage hermes was and is the great central sun of occultism whose rays have served to illumine the countless teachings which have promulgated since his time all the fundamental and basic teachings embedded in the esoteric teachings of every race may be traced back to hermes even the most ancient teachings of india undoubtedly have their roots in the original hermetic teachings from the land of the ganges many advanced occultists wandered to the land of egypt and sat at the feet of the master from him they obtained the master key which explained and reconciled their divergent views and thus the secret doctrine was firmly established from other lands also came the learned ones all of whom regarded hermes as the master of masters and his influence was so great that in spite of the many wanderings from the path on the part of the centuries of teachers in these different lands there may still be found a certain basic resemblance and correspondence which underlies the many and often quite divergent theories entertained and taught by the occultists of these different lands the student of comparative religions will be able to perceive the influence of the hermetic teachings in every religion worthy of the name now known to man whether it be a dead religion or one in full vigor in our times there is always certain correspondence in spite of the contradictory features and the hermetic teachings act as the great reconciler the life work of hermes seems to have been in the direction of planting the great seed truth which has grown and blossomed in so many forms rather than to establish a school of philosophy which would dominate the world's thought but nevertheless the original truths taught by him have been kept intact in their original purity by a few men each age who refusing great numbers of half-developed students and followers followed the hermetic custom and reserved their truth for the few who were ready to comprehend and master it from lip to ear the truth has been handed down among the few there have always been a few initiates in each generation in the various lands of the earth who kept alive the sacred flame of the hermetic teachings and such have always been willing to use their lamps to relight the lesser lamps of the outside world when the light of truth grew dim and clouded by reason of neglect and when the wicks became clogged with foreign matter there were always a few to tend faithfully the altar of the truth 
upon which was kept alight the perpetual lamp of wisdom these men devoted their lives to the labor of love which the poet has so well stated in his lines o oh, let not the flame die out cherished age after age in its dark cavern in its holy temples cherished fed by pure ministers of love let not the flame die out these men have never sought popular approval nor numbers of followers they are indifferent to these things for they know how few there are in each generation who are ready for the truth or who would recognize it if it were presented to them they reserve the strong meat for men while others furnish the milk for babes they reserve their pearls of wisdom for the few elect who recognize their value and who wear them in their crowns instead of casting them before the materialistic vulgar swine who would trample them in the mud and mix them with their disgusting mental food but these men have never forgotten or overlooked the original teachings of hermes regarding the passing on of the words of truth to those ready to receive it which teaching is stated in the Kabbalion as follows where fall the footsteps of the master the ears of those ready for his teaching open wide and again when the ears of the student are ready to hear then cometh the lips to fill them with wisdom but their customary attitude has always been strictly in accordance with the other hermetic aphorism also in the Kabbalion. the lips of wisdom are closed except to the ears of understanding there are those who have criticized this attitude of the hermetists and who have claimed that they did not manifest the proper spirit in their policy of seclusion and reticence but a moment's glance back over the pages of history will show the wisdom of the masters who knew the folly of attempting to teach the world that which it was neither ready nor willing to receive the hermetists have never sought to be martyrs and have instead sat silently aside with a pitying smile on their closed lips while the heathen raised noisily about them in their customary amusement of putting to death and torture the honest but misguided enthusiasts who imagined that they could force upon a race of barbarians the truth capable of being understood only by the elect who had advanced along the path and the spirit of persecution has not yet died out in the land there are certain hermetic teachings which if publicly promulgated would bring down upon the teachers a great cry of scorn and revilement from the multitude who would again raise the cry of crucify crucify in this little work we have endeavored to give you an idea of the fundamental teachings of the Kabbalion, striving to give you the working principles leaving you to apply them yourselves rather than attempting to work out the teaching in detail if you are a true student you will be able to work out and apply these principles if not then you must develop yourself into one for otherwise the hermetic teachings will be as words 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 to you the three initiates end of introduction recording by andrea fiori Chapter One of the Kabbalion by the Three Initiates. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. Chapter One The Hermetic Philosophy. The lips of wisdom are closed, except to the ears of understanding. The Kabbalion. From old Egypt have come the fundamental esoteric and occult teachings which have so strongly influenced the philosophies of all races nations and peoples for several thousand years egypt the home of the pyramids and the sphinx was the birthplace of the hidden wisdom and mystic teachings from her secret doctrine all nations have borrowed india persia chaldea medea china japan assyria ancient greece and rome and other ancient countries partook liberally at the feast of knowledge which the hierophants and masters of the land of isis so freely provided for all those who came prepared to partake of the great store of mystic and occult lore which the master-minds of that ancient land had gathered together in ancient egypt dwelt the great adepts and masters who have never been surpassed and who seldom have been equalled 
during the centuries that have taken their processional flight since the days of the great hermes in egypt was located the great lodge of lodges of the mystics at the doors of her temple entered the neophytes who afterward as hierophants adepts and masters traveled to the four corners of the earth carrying with them the precious knowledge which they were ready anxious and willing to pass on to those who were ready to receive the same all students of the occult recognize the debt that they owe to these venerable masters of that ancient land but among these great masters of ancient egypt there once dwelt one of whom the masters hailed as the master of masters this man if man indeed he was dwelt in egypt in the earliest days he was known as hermes trismegistus he was the founder of the occult wisdom the founder of astrology the discoverer of alchemy the details of his life story are lost to history owing to the lapse of the years though several of the ancient countries disputed with each other in their claims to the honor of having furnished his birthplace and this thousands of years ago the date of his sojourn in egypt in that his last incarnation on this planet is not now known but it has been fixed at the early days of the oldest dynasties of egypt long before the days of moses the best authorities regard him as contemporary of abraham and some of the jewish traditions go so far as to claim that abraham acquired a portion of his mystic knowledge from hermes himself as the years rolled by after his passing from this plane of life tradition recording that he lived three hundred years in the flesh the egyptians deified hermes and made him one of their gods under the name of thoth years after the people of ancient greece also made him one of their many gods calling him hermes the god of wisdom the egyptians revered his memory for many centuries yes tens of centuries calling him the scribe of the gods and bestowing upon him distinctively his ancient title trismegistus which means the thrice great the great great the greatest great etc in all the ancient lands the name of hermes trismegistus was revered the name being synonymous with the fount of wisdom even to this day we use the term hermetic in the sense of secret sealed so that nothing can escape and this by the reason of the fact that the followers of hermes always observed the principle of secrecy in their teachings they did not believe in casting pearls before swine but rather held to the teaching milk for babes meat for strong men both of which maxims are familiar to readers of the christian scriptures but both of which had been used by the egyptians for centuries before the christian era and this policy of careful dissemination of the truth has always characterized the hermetics even unto the present day the hermetic teachings are to be found in all lands among all religions but never identified with any particular country nor with any particular religious sect this because of the warning of the ancient teachers against allowing the secret doctrine to become crystallized into a creed the wisdom of this caution is apparent to all students of history the ancient occultism of india and persia degenerated and was largely lost owing to the fact that the teachers became priests and so mixed theology with the philosophy the result being that the occultism of india and persia have been gradually lost amidst the mass of religious superstition cults creeds and gods so it is with ancient greece and rome so it is with the hermetic teachings of the gnostics and early christians which were lost at the time of constantine whose iron hand smothered philosophy with the blanket of theology losing to the christian church that which was its very essence and spirit and causing it to grope through several centuries before it found the way back to its ancient faith the indications apparent to all careful observers in the twentieth century being that the church is now struggling to get back to its ancient mystic teachings but there were always a few faithful souls who kept alive the flame tending it carefully and not allowing its light to become extinguished and thanks to these staunch hearts and fearless minds we have the truth still with us but it is not found in books to any great extent 
it has been passed along from master to student from initiate to hierophant from lip to ear when it was written down at all its meaning was veiled in terms of alchemy and astrology so that only those possessing the key could read it aright this was made necessary in order to avoid the persecutions of the theologians of the middle ages who fought the secret doctrine with fire and sword stake gibbet and cross even to this day there will be found but few reliable books on the hermetic philosophy although there are countless references to it in many books written on various phases of occultism and yet the hermetic philosophy is the only master key which will open all the doors of the occult teachings in the early days there was a compilation of certain basic hermetic doctrines passed on from teacher to student which was known as the Kabbalion, the exact significance and meaning of the term having been lost for several centuries this teaching however is known to many to whom it has descended from mouth to ear on and on throughout the centuries its precepts have never been written down or printed so far as we know it was merely a collection of maxims axioms and precepts which were non understandable to outsiders but which were readily understood by students after the axioms maxims and precepts had been explained and exemplified by the hermetic initiates to their neophytes these teachings really constituted the basic principles of the art of hermetic alchemy which contrary to the general belief dealt in the mastery of mental forces rather than material elements the transmutation of one kind of mental vibration into others instead of the changing of one kind of metal into another the legends of the philosopher's stone which would turn base metal into gold was an allegory relating to hermetic philosophy readily understood by all students of true hermeticism in this little book of which this is the first lesson we invite our students to examine into the hermetic teachings as set forth in the Kabbalion, and as explained by ourselves humble students of the teachings who while bearing the title of initiates are still students at the feet of hermes the master we herein give you many of the maxims axioms and precepts of the Kabbalion, accompanied by explanations and illustrations which we deem likely to render the teachings more easily comprehended by the modern student particularly as the original text is purposely veiled in obscure terms the original maxims axioms and precepts of the Kabbalion are printed herein in italics the proper credit being given our own work is printed in the regular way in the body of the work we trust that the many students to whom we now offer this little work will derive as much benefit from the study of its pages as have the many who have gone on before treading the same path to mastery throughout the centuries that have passed since the times of hermes trismegistus the master of masters the great great in the words of the Kabbalion, where fall the footsteps of the master the ears of those ready for his teaching open wide the Kabbalion. when the ears of the student are ready to hear then cometh the lips to fill them with wisdom the Kabbalion. so that according to the teachings the passage of this book to those ready for the instruction will attract the attention of such as prepare to receive the teaching and likewise when the pupil is ready to receive the truth then will this little book come to him or her such is the law the hermetic principle of cause and effect in its aspect of the law of attraction will bring lips and ear together pupil and book in company so mote it be End of chapter 1 Recording by Andrea Fiore